Today we're going to talk about completing the square and the quadratic formula. Let's look at this quadratic here. This is in standard form, meaning it goes from the greatest exponent to just the plain x and then the constant at the end. If we were to set this equation equal to 100, could we solve it? Well, sure. There are a few ways we could do it, and first we're going to use completing the square. Let's take what's on the left side here and visualize what this would look like if we were using algebra tiles. We have x squared, and then we have six bars that represent x, and then, oh, one more. And then we have nine units. All right, so the whole idea of completing the square is to arrange what you have here into a square. So let's see if we can rearrange these and make a perfect square. I'm going to have to move three of these in this direction. That's the only way this square will have the same dimensions. And then these unit cubes, nine of those, will fit in here. So this is the basic goal of completing the square. Now you're not going to have to draw it every time. You'll get used to this process and we'll talk about the math behind it. But the nice thing about a square here is that it has the same dimensions in both directions. Both of these are x plus 3. That's going to help me solve because I can rewrite it as x plus 3 squared equals 100. In this format, I can just solve by using inverse operations. I can take the square root of both sides. Remember a square root has both a positive and a negative answer. So x plus 3 is equal to 10, x plus 3 is equal to negative 10, and I can solve both of these to find my two solutions. x is 7 and x is negative 13. Now you might be thinking that seemed like a lot of work when I could have just factored this. And you could have, but we had it equal to to 100, not equal to 0. So factoring wouldn't have helped so much, except that it was a perfect square trinomial. That's what we need when we're completing the square. We need something that'll factor and be a perfect square. So let's look at one that doesn't work out so pretty like this one did. Let's look at this equation. Let's say we want to complete the square so that we can find the zeros and find the vertex. We're still going to use this process of trying to turn this into a square. So let's just start trying to make this into a square with algebra tiles. We have an x squared. Now we have negative 8x. I'm going to use red for the negatives. I know to build a square I'm going to have to put half of them this way and half of them this way. But now I run into a problem, because in order to complete this square, I need 16 positive units in here. And in this equation, I have a negative 3. So I'm going to have to do a little work. Okay, I filled in my 16 positive units. These will be positive because the dimensions are x minus 4 and x minus 4. Negative times a negative will give you positives in here. So I want to have a plus 16. But I don't want to change the equation. So in order to keep this equation just like it is, I'm going to add 16, and I'm also going to subtract 16. Now let me rewrite this, and we'll kind of see how this is going to help us. y equals x squared minus 8x plus 16. I still have that minus 3, and I need to take away the 16 I added. Now, right here in the front, I have a perfect square trinomial. That's going to help me rewrite this equation 
in a format. So this first portion here, this perfect square trinomial, I'm going to rewrite as these factors. x minus 4 times x minus 4, or just squared. I still have the minus 3 and the minus 16. I can go ahead and put those together as minus 19. The nice thing about using complete the square is that I can change this standard form equation into vertex form. Now I can easily spot my vertex, remembering what we did previously. Remember that inside the parentheses, that minus 4 means that your vertex moves over to positive 4, and that minus 19 moves it down 19. So that's your vertex. This format is also easy to find the zeros or the x-intercepts. I can plug in a zero for y. And solve. We'll add 19 to this side. Now I'll take the square root of both sides. Remember, square roots have a positive and a negative answer. And then I'll add 4. Many times we'll just leave our answer like this. This is the most accurate answer. It is two solutions, but sometimes you might be asked to find a decimal. You can just punch that in the calculator, do 4 plus the square root of 19 and 4 minus the square root of 19. Let's look back at these two formats and just think how did we get from here to vertex form. You won't have to draw this every time. We mainly look at B here and we have to take half of that number because we had to split it up in order to make a square. Half have to go here and half will go here. And then we square it to get this number. So that's the important part of the process here. You'll always look at B and you'll cut it in half and then you'll square it. We'll do some more so we can see how that works. Let's solve this using completing the square without drawing. So first I'm going to start rewriting this equation. But then I'm going to pause because here's where I'm going to add my extra stuff. I'm trying to make a perfect square trinomial. So I need to take half of b, half of 10, which is 5, and square it. I'll add 25 here. And then I'll go ahead and bring down minus 12, but since I added 25, I need to subtract 25, and that'll be set equal to 0. Now you may see some sources tell you to go ahead and add the 25 to the other side. That works too. You just need to make sure that you're keeping your equation true, and anything you add, you either need to subtract it or add it to the other side. Now we can make this into x plus 5 squared. Go ahead and combine these to get minus 37. And now I have an equation I can solve with inverse operations. A couple things to look out for when you're using completing the square. First thing, it doesn't have to be set equal to zero. If you want to move that over, you can, but it's not necessary. The other thing is we need this coefficient in the front, a, we need it to be one. So if it's not one, you need to do some work to make it one. In this case, we could divide everything by two. Be sure that you divide every single term by two. Now we can start using completing the square. I need to take half of b, and this will be the new b, not the original, half.
half of b is 2.5 and I'll square it. That gives me 6.25. And since we already have 6 over here, let's go ahead and just add 6.25 to both sides. Notice I haven't changed the meaning. I'm just adding a number here and adding it over here. Now I have a perfect square trinomial. And now I can solve with inverse operations. We'll take the square root of both sides. Square root of 12.25 is 3.5. And there's a positive and a negative. So we have x plus 2.5 equals 3.5. x plus 2.5 equals negative 3.5. And those are our two solutions. When it comes to finding the zeros of a quadratic, we usually have about three options. Factor, complete the square, or use the quadratic formula. I recommend first seeing if you can factor, then complete the square, and last resort, use the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula, a lot of students like it the best. However, it is the one they mess up the most because it has lots of parts. All right, so let's look how the quadratic formula works. Anytime you have a quadratic, be sure it's written in standard form, and then you need to identify A, B, and C. A, B, and C are, you co are the coefficients and the constant. In this case, A is one, B is negative eight, and C is negative three. So here's the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. This is how you find x-intercepts or just solutions if you have it set equal to zero. So let's plug in a, b, and c from our quadratic very carefully. Negative b, so negative negative 8. b squared, be sure you put that in parentheses, minus 4, a is 1, c is negative 3, all over 2a. If you're going to use it, be sure you check each number very carefully, and I recommend simplifying a lot of this by hand. You can put all this in the calculator, but you're going to need a lot of extra parentheses to make it work. All right, let's start simplifying. Negative times a negative eight gives us our positive. Negative eight squared, 64, that's positive. Now we have negative four, positive one, and negative three multiplying. All those multiplied together will be a positive 12. Two times one is two. Okay, now we can add our 64 and 12 to get 76 all over two. Now we need to do a little simplifying. The square root of 76 does simplify, so we can think of factors here. Two times 38. 38 is two times 19. So we have the square root of four times the square root of 19, which is two root 19. So let's rewrite this with the simplified root. Now that both of these terms in the numerator are divisible by two, we can simplify even more and get four plus or minus the square root of 19. Now you could get a decimal by adding these and subtracting these in the calculator. You'll remember we did solve this same quadratic using completing the square. So you can use either method. A couple things to point out with the quadratic formula. This number under here is called your discriminant and it'll let you know how many solutions or how many x-intercepts or how many 
roots you have. If your discriminant is positive, you have two solutions. If it's negative, you have no solution since you can't take a square root of a negative. And if it's zero, you'll have one solution.